If you trade SPY or SPX like I do, you should really watch this tutorial on Market Net Flow by Tradedix for tracking short-term movements in the S&P 500. Now, I share a lot of charts in my SPX Premium blog, and this video is going to help you understand quickly what you're seeing when I post those and how you can use Market Net Flow for trading SPY and SPX. Now, let's get into the tutorial. All right, let's dive into Tradedix. I'm on desktop in a web browser and I'm looking at the default screen, which is the under the on the left, you'll have your navigation menu. You have the market dashboard stocks. This is typically where you get put when you log in and we're going to go to market dashboard options. And this is going to give us market net flow at the very top. I have it the screen expanded using this little button here, but there are some uh, additional instructions over here if you want more help. I'm going to keep this expanded so we can get a, a good view. And we're going to walk through all of the different features here. I don't use every single one of them, but we will kind of walk through those. And there's a couple of drop downs here as well. So the first thing we want to look at is just the chart and, and what we're seeing. This is a one minute chart. It resets every day. It's really good for day trading. If this white line is the one minute line chart of SPY. So even though this is gonna be uh, shown in SPY terms, you can see the, the st SPY stock price on the left uh, Y axis here. This can be translated to SPX, which is what I typically trade. So this, I use this in my SPX trading. And the reason why it, it kind of doesn't matter, um, even though we're, I'm trading SPX, but I'm watching SPYs because the option lines here, which we'll talk about the calls and puts, they are looking at the net premiums from all the stocks, not the indexes. So it's we're not just looking at SPY options or anything like that. It's actually looking at the options from all of the stocks that make up the S&P 500 to give you an idea of what the sentiment is amongst the stocks. Because a lot of times, if you look at options flow for an index, especially SPY, a lot of puts are bought just for hedging purposes and it doesn't really translate into, you know, directional movement for the, the ETF. So this is what the, you know, this is actually the great thing about the tool is that it's actually looking at the options premium or options flow for all the stocks. And that can be reflected in two lines. We have the call line. Again, this is a one minute chart. And then we have the put line. Over to the right is the cumulative net premium. So on this particular day, I'm making this video in the afternoon. We still got about an hour, a couple hours before the close. The net premiums for puts is close to 15 million and the net premiums for call calls are negative. What's that? 7.8, we call it 8 million. So when you think about that, buying puts is bearish and selling calls is bearish. So we have a clean downtrend today and it's, it's, it's a pretty clean chart of puts going up and calls trading sideways and then calls trading down. So calls are being sold net net and puts are being bought net net today. So obviously this is going to translate into bearish stock movement. Now I want you to think about the other side of this too. I don't think of this as smart money buying puts and that kind of thing. I think of this as, from the market maker's perspective of they have to hedge themselves after they they transact all these options with you. So for example, if there's a ton of people buying puts, the market maker is basically selling you those puts and now you're short and they're basically long, they have long delta. So for them to get delta neutral, they have to short the market or short the stock or something so that they don't lose money if the market goes down. So by all with all these puts, you know, increasing and in calls decreasing, this actually adds pressure to the market, which can, um, you may have heard the phrase, you know, the options the market can drive prices to a certain uh, level or whatever. And that's actually the case. And that seems to be what's happening here. So we want to take this very literal, if you will, that if the puts are trading above the calls, that means there's more put premium and less call premium. That's going to give you typically a bearish uh, stance in the market. Now, at the bottom of the chart is, they call it momentum. And what this is, is a histogram of the difference between the call and put line. So it's kind of like a MACD or uh, it's basically a histogram between two moving averages or something like that. That's the concept here. And for this particular day, calls were actually being bought in the morning where puts were just relatively flat. So remember, here's the zero line. And we had some momentum here saying, okay, maybe this market can, can move higher. But then 
lo and behold, the market turns lower, puts increase and cross up and calls decrease and cross down. And you can see the momentum indicator actually crossed down too, letting you know that that's where the puts crossed above the calls. So this is gives you a sense of the the sentiment throughout the day. And, we, and obviously this can be a little bit choppy, but net net it's below zero, right? Um, calls are above, I'm uh, sorry, puts are above calls. So we end up with some bearish sentiment. Now there's another setting for the momentum, uh, the histogram, and that is this button. It's the line with the little circle and it's called convergence. And I'll just read it to you. Enable convergence as your technical indicator. Convergence shows the strength between price action and the market net flow and it's better not to use market net flow when convergence is negative and the color is dimmed on the chart so i'm going to click on this and and it's going to show you a little bit different look to the to the uh, indicator part or the momentum now they call it convergence and what this is doing is it's looking at market net flow and it's saying that calls are above puts so the market should be going up but in this case, the market is actually going down. So they're not in line. When that happens, the convergence indicator uh, goes below zero and it's gray. So this is telling you right now that the market is, for, for this period of time, wasn't really matching the option sentiment. So even though calls are above puts, that doesn't mean you should go long uh, because things can change quickly. In this case, they did. Now, just a little tip and trick is, I like to give the market the first 30 minutes for this to kind of settle and open up uh, because a lot of times there can be chop, there can be a gap from an overnight news or earnings or Fed announcement or in this case CPI or something. So there's a lot of things that can kind of knock the market around the first 30 minutes. So I really don't like to, to take any serious trades off of this. I usually wait. And um, so that's something to just kind of keep in mind, kind of a side note. But ultimately, as price continued lower and puts crossed up, we, we started to see the convergence started to move back up, meaning price is converging or mapping with the options flow. And then we get this type of uh, look. So now, now that we're bearish, um, and this day was, you know, once the move happened, it was pretty choppy. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta you know, trade accordingly. Uh, but ultimately, the market, you know, ends up going lower and we can get a better period downturn here when this crosses up. You know, uh, some of the other traders I've seen, they look at this as kind of a quote unquote short entry because at this point, puts and calls are bearish and, and price is starting to resume the downtrend. So it's best used for, again, for day trading, but this just gives you an idea of where you're at. So I typically like to leave the convergence on because I don't need the other indicator that tells me red is above green. I can already see that on the chart. So I like to just leave this on and get a sense of, uh, you know, it, how price is mapping. So um, the next thing we're gonna look at are the expirations. So by default, Tradedix is gonna do no filtering, which means it's basically looking at options uh, for all the options chains out in the future. And so you have a choice here. You can change it to, I only, I, you know, you only want to look at ex expirations that are 30 days out. These are days, 15 days, seven days, right? So multiple time frames. Um, I typically leave it on no filtering. And here's why, even though I'm a short-term trader, I like to leave it on no filtering because they have this cool little indicator slash signal over here that uh, the they call it time frame con continuity T TFC and basically what this is saying is that calls are above puts so it's bearish and when this is red that's telling you that all the expirations are also bearish so if I go to the seven day look puts are above calls if I go to the 15 day puts are above calls 30 day puts are above calls and no filtering puts are above calls so on all time frames the options market is bearish now there are times where you might get bearish options on the longer time frames, but the seven day may be actually bullish. And if that happens, this is going to be gray. So it's not signaling that it's it's uh, the time frame continuity is there. It's going to kind of look like this. So today you have the continuity saying that all time frames are bearish. So I don't really need to look at these at, for for trading clues. I just keep it on the default here, and I just look to see if this is red now. In the case of a bullish day where calls are above puts, this would be green if all time frames had 
calls above puts for that particular day. One of the other drop downs here is momentum. This changes the look back period. I don't typically mess with this. I just leave this as default. So I'm not going to speak to that very much. And we also have history. So for the most part, I'm looking at one day. This is the day of. But at the end of the week, if you want to look back, I'm doing this video on a Friday. So I could say I'm going to I'm going to look at five days and it's going to show me the market net flow for the entire week. However, it will change the crosses and things on the on the indicators because it's it's accumulating this data over the entire week. Uh, we can see that, you know, it, it was a pretty pretty choppy week. We had a swoosh down after the CPI report, a massive rally, and now we're kind of back down. So net net, this is a very choppy sideways week. So I don't find value in tracking the market this way, but sometimes you can get a good, get a good glance. You could also just look at two days. Uh, one thing I will say is that uh, when the if you look if you're looking at one day as soon as the day starts you're only going to see one or two lines here this is also uh, why I wait for 30 minutes to let some of the data come in and it this start to get established before you make a decision because there isn't a lot of data here. But when the day starts, I've seen some people look at two days. That way, when the day starts, they can kind of get a sense of, um, you know, what was happening yesterday. Now, in this particular two day period, the market had a, a huge gap down, had a huge run up. Um, and then today, I think this is about yeah, we had a run up today and now it's moving lower. So again, when you look at the convergence tool here, even though calls and puts are, are, are net net above zero at the beginning, the convergence is telling you that it's not there. So I, again, I like to just look at this as a general sense, but for when you get into day trading for that particular day, if you're gonna take trades later in the morning, I think you just kind of stick it uh, on by default, which is one day. The other thing in the top right is you can go back to look at previous days history. Like if I wanted to go and see what market net flow looked like on Wednesday uh, for that particular day, um, I can I can kind of look at that. It disables some of the features, but you can get an idea of what that looked like. Um, and we go back to uh, today's date. And then I'm actually gonna remove that from the link. And let's get this to refresh, okay. So in addition to the options flow um, on put calls and puts, Tradedix also has a couple of cool charting tools, if you will. One is their algorithmic support and resistance levels by Tradedix. I don't know how they evaluate these. I don't use them a whole bunch, but let's just throw those on there. And you can see these little dotted lines at various levels. And when you get them spread out like this, I don't find them hugely useful, but they can help confirm certain levels or resistance. So they're, they're viewing these levels as support and resistance. Um, so you can add those on and, and see where that may line up on the chart for you. Um, the other thing they have is gamma levels. I do use gamma levels. These are top GEX levels from short-term contracts, 30, less than 30 days. So a gamma level or a GEX level is an area where there's a lot of options happening from the market makers and they tend to act as support and resistance. So when this level is broken, you can see we were coming down testing support. This was support for most of the day. It broke under that and now it's, you know, firmly under that and starting to move lower into the next GEX level. These levels can change around a little bit um, like the following day. So it's good to have, I like to have these on. And when you couple that, the GEX levels with the uh, support and resistance levels, if, if these line up, that can give you a little bit more confidence for that particular level. Uh, but I typically just look at the GEX levels. I'm looking at SPX a lot, so I have my own levels over there. But these also line up with your standard uh, levels for, for, for the S&P 500. For example, this is 360 on SPY. That's about 3,600 on the SPX. The next one is 365. That's about 3,650. So for those that have followed my videos, um, we know uh, I've mentioned that a lot of the levels on SPX are at the big round numbers, 3,600. Uh, 30, uh, 3650 and this would be 3550. So a lot of times these line up with my SPX levels, but we can see a small one here at, at 357. That's probably 3575. So again, on SPX quarter, quarter strikes tend to have a lot of open interest and those can be levels to play off of. But I do like to have that on here because as the market, um, for example, if we were pulling back 
and we're coming to the support potential support level and the options market was bullish i may look to find that as support now today i'm not expecting 360 to hold necessarily because the options market is bearish and it could easily push it lower and that's pretty much what it's doing but i do like the idea of watching these gex levels uh, throughout my trading day so those are the main components that i use in market net flow from tradedix i hope it helps and we'll see you in the next video